What is going on? Welcome back to another video of Cup of Kodo 1. Uh, today we're knocking out another video in the Panda series, the Definitive Guide to Pandas. Uh, so let's uh, let's get right into it. Again, we're not going to be using debugging because we're not doing many loops. This is just straight up data manipulation, so it's easier just to run the code in the console and get the output and go from there. So with that being said, let's start out top. Import pandas as PD because we are doing pandas. Um, some of this will look similar in terms of the variables that we're using before, but we're applying different applications of methods, functions, and ways of pulling pulling uh, data out. So science one equals um, PD dot data frame, and then we have our dictionary again. Don't forget that job born died age, and we have the appropriate same categories. Age is back in the uh, dictionary though. We're closing the dictionary and then we're indexing based on name this time. So indexing on Albert and Nicola. And again, the first element is going to be tied to the first values and the second element will be tied to the second values in the dictionary keys. Columns, we're specifying the columns this time. So they're going to be job, born, died, age. So they should not come out alphabetical. They should come out exactly how you specified. And then we're printing science one. So coming up top, sure enough, here we go. We have Albert, was that the first index? Yes. Nicola, second index? Yes. And then we're going along accordingly those are appropriate and is the order right job born died age job born died age good so that's working get a series vector of age from our data frame that's a df is so age is equals science one and then we're saying we want to pull out the age column and that we have right here so print ages so you'll notice we did that we printed it out and it gave me albert einstein it gave me the key and the value uh, only because, again, we're saying with science, give me the age. So it's giving me the index, which is Albert and Nicola. And then it's giving me their age that I said this is what I wanted to pull out. So, and it shows me, just like a dictionary, look at that name, semicolon, age. Uh, and the data type is an integer for the output. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And then I have uh, many panda methods are also seen in some of the NumPy arrays. We'll do a whole series on NumPy uh, after this. Um, and then we just have three different val four different values here. So what are we doing? We're taking ages dot mean, ages dot min, max, and the standard deviation. So the average was 81, the lowest was 76, the highest was 86, and that's the standard deviation. Uh, not much of a mathematical insight considering we only have two values. Um, but again, just showing that you can use uh, different methods that we see in pandas and even other just general Python math, even the math um, library. Uh, you can apply those on columns that are even within data frames. Uh, say we don't know the exact row or the column, but you do know the data value. So um, that meets or don't meet what you're looking for, grabbing a larger data set. So what this is talking about is we have a small data set right now. I could print that we, we only have two different values in it. If you have a data set, though, that has you know hundreds, millions, thousands, millions of, of, of um of rows and then God knows how many columns and you want to pull out information you're not going to know the name of that data to say give me this or give me that but um you or you or, or conversely you may not know what row or column it is but you do know what you want you're not going to sit there like in control f and go through all that crap so there is a way that you can use python to say i don't know the row or the column but this is the data that i want to pull from this so let's go through that. So to do this, we're going to be using a larger data set than our our um, our, our data frame of, of uh, one dimension that we had before. And so now we're going to be using a scientist.csv, a comma separated uh, value file. So data equals PD. And as a side note, if I, if I forget to upload this file, um, please somebody remind me in the comments and I'll throw it up. Data equals pd.readcsv, and then we're just putting the file in.csv as a string. So now that that now that is not going to print out on the screen because we didn't print data, we have the variable data, but now that file is stored in the data variable. Let's check the head to see what we're dealing with. So data.head. So we print out the first five rows. So we can see that we have stop it. Good. We have a name, born, died, age, occupation, and we have one, two, three, four, five people. And we can kind of see the format, even how the, the years, month, and days are done, um, that the ages are integers, occupations are different, uh, essentially to string objects. Um, so we can see exactly what we're dealing with. Um, I can go directly to looking at the data or even create a variable to hold specific data. So for that, I'm just saying print data, and I want to pull out the age. So printing the data, and it's giving me the age. So that tells me right there that there are only seven people in this file. So if I did, where was my print head? Here it is. So if I did seven, and I print the head, it's going to give me all seven 
individuals, hey, Alan Turing, liked him, uh, all individuals that are in, in this, if we put print head of, let's go one up, it should give me, it's only giving me, it's, how, many, how far can we go with this? Anybody remember what that was before? Data to underscore string parentheses. Let's print out the whole damn thing and see what we got. So we only have eight individuals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's why it's zero to seven. So what if we pulled, I want to see if we could throw an error. Head of, um, let me say 10, because I mean, we don't have that many. And that's also, there's no zero in head. So I should get, damn, it's not going to give me an error. It's only going to print out the, the, the top number that we have there. Uh, but we'll keep it as five for now, just because that is the default. And it's good to know what the defaults are of what you're running. So now here it's printing me out the, the age of all the individuals in the data because we didn't specify what rows we wanted. We just said, give me the data, whoops, from the file data or the variable data, which has the file read into it, pull out the age and then give me a new line. And then we're having a data frame, give me the age, apply the mean to those ages. So that's exactly what that is here. It just gave me the mean of the ages that are within the data frame that we created. And then going down, um, the dot describe will give uh, great data as well as the percentiles lower to higher. So 25 um, of the 44 means one fourth of data is age of 44 or less. So what that means is we're printing data from the variable data, pull out age and do dot describes method. And that is right here. Nope, I'm lying to you, I'm sorry, here. So we're describing um, the data. So, or rather more specifically, the age column that right resides in the data frame that we're using, which is the scientist.csv that's stored in the data variable. So again, from the data variable, pull out age and let's do a dot describe on it. This is, it gives some, some uh, statistical properties. So the count is eight and we saw that we, when we're utilizing the head function as well, when we're trying to go beyond beyond eight, it's only gonna print out index of zero to seven because there's only eight uh, rows within this, this data frame. It's gonna do the mean of the age because the dot describe is being, everything's being applied to the age column. Uh, standard deviation, minimum 25%, 50%, 75%, and then the max. Um, and we'll get into those percentiles when we start to do uh, some of the graphings in uh, pandas and matplotlib where we're doing uh, first and third percentiles um, and, and min and maxes as well and the means. We'll, we'll, we'll get into those uh, when, we, when we get there. So I wanted to show you now you do have the dot describe. It's good to kind of see what the data frames you're dealing with. And you can even somewhat start to visualize this, how it would look on a box and whisker uh, plot graph. Um, then uh, if we want the ages that are only above the mean, so if we look at our dot describe, we can see the mean is 59.125. We're not going to go by hand. So here we're saying um, age is equal data. Ages is the variable, and we're equaling the uh, variable data that has the file, and from that file, pull out age. Print ages. So we're saying print this, which is just the data frame. And then we're printing this ages greater than ages dot mean. So that's all we're asking it to print. So from the ages variable that's here, which is the data age, we have ages greater than ages dot mean. That's what we want to print out. So that's what we have here. So we have 61, 90, 66, and 77. And we know from our dot described that the mean was 59. So that's all appropriate. So that is correct. Going down, uh, many methods that work on a series or data frame are vectorized, meaning um, that they work on the entire vector set simultaneously. Uh, that we're not seeing any benefits of that right now because we're doing very small um, data data sets, but that becomes hugely important down the road. Um, operation between two vectors of the same length, um, the, re the resulting vector will calculate element by element. Um, that can be memory intensive and time intensive as well. Uh, so give me an element by element vector. So we're going to print ages plus ages. And so that's going to go do, 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 do. So all this did was if we look at where's row zero. So Rosalind Fra Franklin, the chemist, age 37. So if you're going to do 37 and 37, you're going to come down to 74. So all it did was we did ages plus ages 
So it did. It's vector by vector. It's going, uh, and it's the same size, the same length rather. So it's 37 and 37, 61 and 61, 90 and 90, 66, 66, 56 and 56. So it was just adding them up, but it was combining them here for all of the elements. Uh, maybe you want to really make the ages um, nuts, so we could do ages times ages. That was just for fun. So that was just uh, multiplying the ages. Um, again, just different, getting used to different mathematical operations and syntax within Python. Um, let's hit the vectors with a constant scalar. So the scalar is, a, it's not a vector, the scalar only has, it's a not even a dimensional piece, it's just a, a numerical value, so the scalar will be recycled across all the elements of the vector. So before when we were doing vectors um, of the same size, it was element by element, so 37, 37, 61, 61, 90. Now we're saying take a scalar of 100, that's what we have here, and in, it could have been any number, scalar of 100, and add it to the ages. So now it can take scalar 100 and it can apply it apply it to this almost as if it was doing it in parallel and give us that output. Um, many times the vectors are not the same size. Uh, the operation is index specific. Other vectors get a not a number or a nan. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. So all I did here is print the ages and then here because I did ages dot panda series 3, 9, 10, 44, and 4. So where do we have, it's index specific. So let me go to, uh, I can keep it here because we're on, we're on. So if we go to a three, zero, one, two, three. So we're gonna get 66, 66 plus, oh no, I did all seven, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did all seven. So if I look at uh, index zero, so this is going to be index 0 on the list is 3. So my index of 0 originally for ages, see how it says ages plus this? So 37, index of 0, 37 plus 3 is now 40. And then when I go to the index of 1 of my series, I'm adding 9 to the index series 1 of ages. So 1 is 61, 61 plus 9 is 70. And then we're going, again, index of 2, 3, 4, so index of 4, we have 56 plus 4. We're getting the index 4 of 60. I did not give any additional additions. So um, since this was index specific, the other vectors are going to get not a number, not a number, not a number, just because there was no application to them. It's not going to default to anything else because it wouldn't, it wouldn't, then it wouldn't be a true representation of what it is that we put in applying the, the method of the dot series. Um, one of my favorite parts about pandas is how the vectors with a common index are automatically aligned. So we have ages dot sort the index. Ascending is false. So what that's going to do is it's going to put um, the highest on the top and the lowest on the bottom. If ascending was true, then of course it would have reversed that. I also just could have left it alone if it was ascending is true. And then we're going to have um, ascending is true. So as we go lower, we're ascending. We're getting higher. Originally, I have ascending of four. So we're just sorting the index of the ages. But I like how it keeps it. The favorite part of my hand is how the vectors with a common index are always going to be kept aligned. So if you could imagine if we had row index zero, if we had all this data, and then how can I make this more applicable? I could do, where was it? Say I did this data. Now I'm changing uh, the sort index that we're applying. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm taking the, the file data, which was the scientist.csv, sorting the index, ascending is true. So when I'm talking about the order, I just wanted to have something that had more row, uh, more columns in it. So when I have the order with 0, 1, 2, 3, we're ascending, and we have Rosalind, she has her birth date, her die date, her age, and her, her occupation. And if we do set this now to false, and I rerun it, now we're descending, 
but it kept the order among the the columns and the rows. So Rosalind Franklin still has the proper birth date, death date, age, and uh, occupation, and so does everybody else. Now, anybody who's ever messed with something as silly as Excel has seen that sometimes when you're manipulating indexes or rows, the columns can get all screwed up. They, they, they don't stay together. But in pandas, um, vectors that have a common index stay that way as you're manipulating the data, um, which is hugely, hugely important, as you can imagine. All right, well, that's going to be it for today for the Definitive Guide to Panda series. Uh, have a great day. Play with the code, break with it, get uh, a feel for applying these different um, methods that we're using on the particular columns of different files. I'll try to remember to upload the scientist.csv so you have that to play with. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.